Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Toxic Light. So here to talk about light bulbs. So we've got six light bulbs. Uh, it's a common question I keep getting asked because I do research light, and that is which light bulbs are healthy and which light bulbs should you avoid? And lots of people have different opinions on this, but I've been researching this area for a few years now. And I can tell you that some of these light bulbs make me sick. And we're gonna talk about some of those light bulbs in a minute. But this is a good range of light bulbs that you'll find around today. And we're gonna go through them. So the first one, this is the LED. It's the most modern of the light bulbs. It has a bunch of electronics in the base and it puts out light using semiconductors. So my advice to people right now is to avoid these. You don't, wanna, you don't want these products, simply because the, nobody really understands the long-term exposure risks to these bright, high-powered LED light bulbs. So this is new territory. And uh, if you use these light bulbs, you're actually a guinea pig for the lighting industry. Because the lighting industry can't tell you what 30 years of exposure to one of these light bulbs does to the human, because nobody knows. They haven't been around long enough. So it's, a, it's an unproven product. It also has electronics in it. It produces harmonics on your electrical cables. And you may find that your cables start giving off radio waves and you may get radio wave sickness. And I've actually had radio wave sickness and it's very unpleasant, particularly when your doctor can't diagnose it. So uh, most doctors can't diagnose radio wave sickness and these light bulbs can give you it. So you, you need to be very, very careful around these electronic light bulbs. So moving on to the next light bulb, here's another electronic light bulb. So again, you've got the same radio wave sickness problems with these light bulbs. And uh, this is the compact fluorescent light and it's very easy, easily recognizable by its spirals. And those spirals, it's just a gas, it's got mercury in it, you don't wanna break them. You break them, you're gonna have a mercury spill inside your home. You're gonna to have to deal with it appropriately. So they're actually quite toxic when you break them. So. My advice to people is don't have these compact fluorescent lights simply because I actually had them in my home and nobody ever told me that there was a lot of people getting sick around these compact fluorescent lights. And I had them from about 2004 to about 2011. And that period of my life, I was actually quite sick. And I attribute some of that sickness to these strange lights. I actually later tested them for the spectrum emissions and they have a very spiked spectrum. I actually have videos of that testing on my channel. You can, if you root through my videos, you'll come across them. So yeah, they have a very spiked spectrum of light. It's very unnatural. It doesn't occur in nature. And uh, both of these first two light bulbs, if you get the wrong ones, you may end up with a lifetime of insomnia while you're living under them because they can have too much blue light. And if you've got too much blue light output in your light bulbs, then you are gonna get insomnia and it's gonna be continuous. You know, you're not gonna be getting any sleep whatsoever. So yeah, they can induce insomnia into you. And uh, I had that for many years and I attribute some of that insomnia to the lighting products that I had, which were compact fluorescent during that period. So I don't particularly like these new electronic light bulbs, and I, I don't recommend people to get them. I think this idea that you're saving the planet is just a marketing ploy, and uh, the people behind those ploys are staying quiet about these other problems that these light bulbs have, these modern untried, untested light bulbs. Nobody really knows what the long-term health consequences are of these light bulbs. Nobody's actually lived under them for 50 or 60 years. So the health problems are still emerging with these first two light bulbs. So my advice to you is don't be a guinea pig and avoid these first two light bulbs. There's plenty of people reporting problems with them today. So we're gonna move on to this one. This is a full spectrum filament light bulb. And uh, what exactly does full spectrum mean? Well, it's, it's very vague, but what it basically means is that it's supposed to mimic sunlight. So there's a problem with that for nighttime lighting in the fact that nighttime there is no sunlight. So you don't want a light bulb that mimics sunlight over nighttime because it's really gonna mess around with your biological systems. Uh, you may end up with insomnia from a light bulb that mim mimics daylight and sunlight. So I don't recommend full spectrum light bulbs for nighttime use, but they 
probably have a good application in daytime use. And I think if you're going to do daytime lighting, you should investigate these because these are much better than these. So if you're going to do daytime lighting, the full spectrum filament light bulb may be the way to go. But you certainly don't want it in your nighttime lighting products. So certainly not in your evening home lighting. And certainly not in your bedroom. So talking about evening lighting is the street light. This is high pressure sodium street light. You can see it's got this little capsule of sodium and a few other gases in there to try and mimic a outdoor light. The light out of these looks kind of golden when you see them in the streets. So it's it's kind of, it's not a white light, it's a golden light that they give out. And I've noticed that, you know, people that I know that have died prematurely, when I look at their homes, they live very close to street lights. And I actually lived a couple of homes that I've lived in over the years have had street lights very close to them. And I have to say I wasn't very healthy in those homes. So I kind of associate street lights with bad health and also premature death from seeing uh, some of the people that I know die who lived very close to streetlights. So I think there's something very strange going on around streetlights and you should avoid them. And uh, this, the toxicity of streetlights is still emerging. They've been around for a long, long time, but you know, nobody really fully understands the biological toxicity of streetlights. And uh, there is one thing that we do know for sure, and that is they have a very unnatural spectrum of light and they also introduce harmonics onto the electrical system. So they're going to contaminate your electrical system at frequencies. And the light is not very healthy from what I can tell. So I would recommend that you avoid street lights. And if you live near to street lights, I actually don't have any street lights in my area where I live. But if you do, and the street lights are shining in through your windows, I would recommend that you put blackout blinds on those windows. I, don't think it's a good idea to have long-term exposure to the spectrum of light coming off street lights. And particularly on your bedroom, your bedroom should be completely dark of a night time. So you want to have no lighting products whatsoever in your bedroom when you're sleeping, uh, no evidence of light. And if you can see your hand in front of your face when you're in your bedroom, then your bedroom is probably too bright. So you should uh, work on making sure that whatever you need to do to get your bedroom completely dark is what you should be doing. So actually sleep very, very well in a very dark bedroom. And the more light that's in the bedroom, the more disrupted my sleep becomes. So that's one of the things that I found while I was researching toxic light. So we're going to get on to the light bulbs that I do actually tell people to get. And before we actually talk about the last two light bulbs, I just want to say that, you know, all artificial lighting has risks. So, you know, there's no such thing as the light bulb that has no health risks associated with it. So the thing that you want of a nighttime is when you're using electric lighting products is you want your bedroom to be as dark as possible and just have enough illumination to do what it is that you're doing. So if you're sitting in bed reading a book, you just want sufficient illumination to read that book. And the same throughout the entire home of an evening, you just want sufficient illumination for the task at hand. So you don't want your house to be like daytime of a nighttime. It's quite the opposite. You, you want to kind of be down somewhere around the lighting level of candles, you know, not too much brighter because you're going to upset the rhythms of your body if your, your house is like daytime because, you know, your body is not supposed to be exposed to light once the sun's gone down. So you're overriding the body's natural processes with light bulbs. So keep it dim. And the two bulbs that I'm going to recommend are the conventional filament light bulb. So it's tried and tested. Nobody's really reporting any health problems from what I can tell around these filament light bulbs. And they don't, they don't seem to introduce any problems onto the electrical system. They, they have what's known as a linear draw of current, so they don't seem to inject dirty electricity or harmonics. And it's the same for this light bulb. I want to show you this one up close because I've had some questions about this light bulb. And when I talk about halogen light bulbs, this is what I'm talking about. So it's a conventional light bulb, has the conventional base, and it has a halogen light bulb. It's that little glass light bulb that you can see in the middle. So it's a halogen light bulb, has this 
glass shield on it for UV shielding so you don't get sunburn off it. And I use a combination of conventional and halogen light bulbs at my home and that works well for me. And this is the thing that I say to people is, you know, light bulbs are something you should experiment with because if you choose the wrong light bulb, you could enter into a lifetime of sickness if you keep using that wrong light bulb. And if you choose the right light bulb, then you're gonna be very healthy. So it's very, very easy today to choose the wrong light bulb. And it's much harder to choose the right light bulb. And that was the purpose of this video, is that over daytime, you should probably be using full spectrum filament light bulbs. And over nighttime, you should be using conventional tungsten and possibly halogen light bulbs. And that's my conclusions. And if you want to read more on this subject, it's in Toxic Light. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.